From the Chattahoochee Tech Studio, welcome to the Marietta Daily Journal podcast. Today is Friday, February 17th, and happy 60th birthday to Michael Jordan. You gonna do this? Okay, fine. That's all I needed. That's all I needed for him to do that, and it, it became personal with me. I'm Dan Ratcliffe, and here are your top stories presented by Engineered Solutions of Georgia. A Marietta man was killed in a shooting on South Cobb Drive. Ackworth Senator Ed Setzler wants to expand religious freedom laws in Georgia. And both McEachern and basketball teams are region championship bound. We'll have all this and more coming up on the Marietta Daily Journal podcast. Engineer Solutions of Georgia. We guarantee a stable drive foundation. With over 30 years of experience and a lifetime of support, residential and commercial. Hey, we do it all. For basement waterproofing and repairs to your foundation. Dial 678-ESOG now. A Marietta man was killed in a shooting and an extended stay on South Cobb Drive and another arrested in the early morning incident on Wednesday. Ricky Haney died after being shot in the abdomen while in room 210 of the Cumberland Lodge Hotel. Wilson said Clarence Mitchell of Marietta told detectives at the scene an altercation occurred on Tuesday between him and Haney, leading to a separate altercation on Wednesday. Wilson added that the second altercation allegedly led Mitchell to fire a single gunshot at Haney, who died of his injuries after being transported to the hospital. Mitchell was arrested by police and charged with felony murder, aggravated assault, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a crime. Anyone with information regarding this incident is asked to contact the Cobb County Police tip hotline. The right to free exercise is, is just a very, very, very minimal right in Georgia. There's really no framework for policymakers to decide what's the right balance. How would we, how would we resolve this? Georgia State Senator Ed Setzler, a Republican from Ackworth, filed legislation this week he said would expand state religious protections to mirror those imposed by a 1993 federal law. The Religious Freedom Restoration Act, or SB 180, borrows from existing federal legislation on religious liberty and renews the debate over constitutional rights nearly seven years after a previous bill was vetoed by former Governor Nathan Deal. Deal's decision to shoot down the legislation in 2016 came as LGBTQ rights activists said it would effectively legalize discrimination as the bill would have allowed religious organizations to refuse service if doing so would violate their beliefs, among other measures. Georgia's business community, including the Cobb Chamber of Commerce, commended the veto by Deal. Setzler's new bill enters the General Assembly with significant Republican support out of the gate as 24 other GOP state senators have already co-signed the measure. Cobb's two other Republican state senators, Kay Kirkpatrick and John Albers, were not listed as co-sponsors. Both told the MDJ they had not reviewed the bill before it was filed. Senator Setzler said the law isn't designed to favor one side or another in a question over religious expression, but to serve as a yardstick by which disputes can be evaluated in court. Jeff Graham, executive director of Georgia Equality, said that while freedom of religion is a cornerstone of the country, he says it's imperative that in the protection of religion that the state not create license to discriminate. McEachern pulled away with a big second quarter and held off a late Hillgrove comeback to win 50-43 in the semifinals of the Girls Region 3-7-A basketball tournament at Harrison on Wednesday. The Indians outscored the Hawks 13-3 in the second quarter to take control, though Hillgrove eventually closed the gap in the second half and got within one late in the fourth quarter. The win earned McEachern a spot in today's championship game against North Paulding. Hillgrove will face Harrison in the third place game. Kalis Hill scored 21 points and Jada Bates added 15 points to lead the way for McEachern. Yolanda Floyd scored 16 points for Hillgrove. (laughs) 
McEachern got its quest for a region championship off to a strong start with an 84-56 victory over Marietta in the semifinals of the Region 3-7A basketball tournament at Harrison on Wednesday. The Indians will play Hillgrove in the championship game while Marietta takes on Harrison in the third place contest today. McEachern was boosted by a strong first quarter in which it outscored Marietta 21-12 and it continued to gradually build its lead the rest of the way. Rutgers commitment Ace Bailey led the way for McEachern with 31 points, while Moses Hips contributed 14 points for the Indians. Jack Bourgeois scored 15 points on five three-pointers, while Jaden Mann added 13 points for Marietta. In Georgia, the weather never ceases to do unpredictable things. Peace of mind should be top of mind where it comes to your heating and cooling system. Daco Systems has three generations of experience with HVAC excellence they've shared with Cobb County and the greater metro Atlanta area. Daco Systems has been family owned and operated since they started out, and Dean Yarrington has built their business into what it is today through policies of honesty, responsiveness, and attention to the needs of customers. The Daco Systems team is equipped with the knowledge, tools, products, and over four decades of experience that help them get each job done right the first time, and they back that up with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Along with exceptional service, Daco Systems provides free estimates on new heating and AC installations, and you can reach them after hours when you have an HVAC emergency. Get peace of mind. Call Daco Systems today at 770-209-2261 or visit them online at dacosystems.com. Daco Systems, a premier train comfort specialist. In honor of Valentine's Day, get a sweetheart deal of $500 off a complete system with install by the end of February. You deserve better than your bank. Better service, better rates, better solutions. If you live or work in Cobb County, now is the perfect time to make the switch to Credit Union of Georgia, the better way to bank. Since 1960, Credit Union of Georgia has been providing Northwest Georgia with financial solutions that make sense for your home, business, and family. As a homegrown, not-for-profit cooperative, our members are our mission. Not only will you get the best loan rates, you'll get personalized customer service from people who understand your needs. Plus, Credit Union of Georgia provides real convenience with a network of more than 30,000 accessible ATMs and branch locations across the country. Of course, there's also five locations right here in Cobb County. Ready to see how much better your banking can be with Credit Union of Georgia? Become a member today or apply for a loan online by visiting cuofga.org. Credit Union of Georgia, the better way to bank. It looks like the triple demic in Georgia is on the decline. Here's community reporter Matt Golden with more. Georgia's triple demic, the simultaneous outbreaks of flu, COVID, and respiratory syncytical virus, or RSV, is on the decline, according to state epidemiologist Cherie Drenzik. Flu season started early and peaked in October, both nationally and in Georgia. Hospitalizations are down about 60% since last week in Metro Atlanta, the sole region where the DPH tracks the data. Despite the decline in the amount of flu activity, severe outcomes including death are higher nationally than in the past year. So far this flu season, 97 children have died from the flu nationwide, including six just this past week. Drizic said older adults and young children are the most likely to experience severe outcomes such as hospitalization and death. The pattern for RSV, which typically causes cold-like symptoms but can be serious in young children, has been similar to the pattern for the flu. The RSV season began early and peaked in October. There is also good news when it comes to COVID-19. The level of hospitalizations for elderly Georgians is about one-fifth of what it was this time last year. Deaths have also decreased. The decline in severe outcomes indicates COVID vaccines and boosters are working. Though the risk has decreased, many are still vulnerable to COVID, with more than 3,000 people still dying of COVID each week in the United States. Drizic said that the flu vaccine and bivalent COVID boosters remain critical for those at risk. For more on this story, please go to mdjonline.com. For the Marietta Daily Journal podcast, I'm Matt Golden. A Douglasville man has been arrested and charged with arson, accused by authorities of starting a fire in Mableton on Tuesday. 
Sebastian Perez was charged with first-degree arson, a felony. According to Cobb County Fire and Emergency Services, firefighters responded to a commercial fire in the 1300 block of Old Powder Springs Road shortly before 10 a.m. Tuesday. Perez is being held at the Cobb County Jail and is ineligible for bond. Two people were shot and injured at an apartment complex in South Cobb early Thursday. Officers responded to a reported shooting around 1.24 a.m. at the Premier Apartments located off Riverside Parkway in the Six Flags area. There they found 23-year-old Phil Ray of Austell and 19-year-old Jamari Payne of Woodstock, both with gunshot wounds. One person had a gunshot wound to their left foot, while the other had a gunshot wound to their arm and torso. Ray and Payne were both taken to a local hospital for treatment where they are in stable condition. Police continue to investigate the shooting. Anyone with information is asked to contact Cobb Police. Hi, I'm Glenn Drake, owner of Drake Realty. The world's changed a lot in the last year, so Drake Realty is changing with it. Our newest website allows you to find your property and agent, then we take care of the rest. We have experienced partners in state-of-the-art technology to keep your earnest money safe and closings on time. If you're looking for a seamless transaction from contract to close, visit us online at drakerealty.com. Hey, what are you doing? I'm adding to my Pinterest boards. There are so many great Pinterest ideas out there. I don't know which one to start first. I know what you mean. That's why I made plans to go to the Georgia Pinners Conference at the Cobb Galleria on March 24th and 25th. The Georgia Pinners Conference? What's that? It's the one event where creative, passionate do-it-yourselfers go to attend classes taught by the best Pinterest presenters from all over the nation. There are over 100 classes showcasing the most popular Pinterest trends, and the best part is that you can make and complete your projects right then and there. Plus, there's over 200 vendors showcasing their new products for the year. That sounds like something I definitely want to attend. I know! This is going to be so much fun! The Georgia Pinners Conference, the Cobb Gallery on March 24th and 25th. Fifth. Go to ga.pinnersconference.com to register and sign up for classes you're most interested in. But hurry, classes fill up fast. That's georgia.pinnersconference.com. Thanks again for listening to today's Marietta Daily Journal podcast. Did you know over 50% of Americans listen to podcasts weekly? Make sure you join us for our next episode and share this podcast on social media with your friends and family. You can find us on TikTok at MDJ Podcast, add us to your Alexa Flash Briefing or Google Home Briefing, and be sure to like, follow, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is a production of BG Ad Group. Darren Sutherland, Executive Producer. Doug Harding, Creative Director. Jacob Sutherland, Director. Producers Jason Gentarola and Matt Golden. And Jin Rei Zhang, Video Producer. All rights reserved. <laughs>